In Madras, Neville found that Ramanujan was married to a 14-year-old girl called Janaki Amal. She is now 87 and lives in a poor area of Madras, surrounded by mementos of her husband. All I can tell you is that day and night he worked on sums. He didn't do anything else. He wasn't interested in anything else, just sums. He wouldn't stop work even to eat. We had to make rice balls for him and place them in the palm of his hand. Isn't that extraordinary? His family told him not to go, and at first he agreed not to. But then he said he was going to Namakal to ask the goddess Namagiri for guidance. She told him to go. Yes, and now I remember. I asked if I could go with him but he told me I was too young. Before he left for London, he had his hair long and because he thought it would hurt our feelings, he sent us off to Kopagonam. Then he cut his hair and dressed in different clothes. You can see the photo of how he looked. I myself never saw him like that. I only saw the photo. He didn't like to have his photo taken. He used to say, if you had come with me, I wouldn't have fallen ill. It's because you didn't come that my health failed. He said he had left all his maths books in England and would like to go back. He also said he had 5,000 rupees in savings to buy me diamond eardrops and a gold belt. He wouldn't talk to anyone who came to the house. It was always maths. Even then he didn't care about his meals, but would only do sums. He sent them to England. Four days before he died, he was scribbling. He filled a box with papers, and there were more papers scattered around the bed. The papers went here and there and changed hands. I don't know where they went. For him, in this universe, maths was everything. On his deathbed, he told me that his name would live for a hundred years. He said, whether I am alive or dead, you will have money. He knew he was dying and said there was nothing anyone could do about it. I always remember his name whenever I meditate.